The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IA exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is proudly brought to you by NetWealth. For over 21 years, NetWealth has provided market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help wealth businesses thrive. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important to embrace new technology to enhance the way you run your business. With change comes your chance to use advanced technology, reshape your client experience, and see wealth differently. Visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello, and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantinus, and joining me here today to deep dive into the Astute Wheel app is an Army Reserve Lieutenant, a Kokoda Track Walker, a Price Waterhouse alumni, and previously owned his own financial advice business. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Hans Egger. Woo! Welcome. Thanks, Peter. <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> no, not at all. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Now, we will deep dive and we'll get into all things Astute Will. But first, I just thought we'd take a moment, let's ease in and let's get to know you as a user of tech a little bit uh, okay. so that before we dive into the particular wonderful software you've built. So now this is clearly a deep psychological question. What's your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, and this is going to seem a little bit weird, but I'll, I'll put it into context. So we've got a dog that's uh, over 16 years old, a uh, oh. Labrador. And so she's kind of at the end of her uh, era and she's struggling with a few things. And And my wife is a nurse. And so she's interested in, you know, health. Yep. So one of the things that I send to her every afternoon is if I've walked our dog Cookie and she's successfully pooed. <laughs> so I have an emoji of the dog, uh, a cookie because that's her name, and yeah. the poo emoji. So <laughs> that gets used uh, daily. <laughs> that's fantastic. And how efficient, right? Yeah, it's just three. Right. It's just three images. None of this rubbish typing with two thumbs. I love it. That's that's a fantastic answer. Thank you. Um, all right. And in terms of look, we all live in our smartphones now. That's where our worlds are. If you had to delete everything on your smartphone, all of the apps, but you could only keep three, which three would you keep? Yeah, the the ones that I use the most. I, I sort of wake up early. I work from home, so I don't have a commute. Um, so I read uh, the Sydney Morning Herald, the Financial Review and the New York Times every morning. I spend about an hour going through those. So I'd have to say those. Mm. But then my daughter who left home uh, 18 months ago, she's big in Instagram. So if there was a fourth one, and I think I would have to get rid of one of those and keep in contact with my daughter. <laughs> Fantastic. Social media is such a good um, connection, isn't it? I mean, people talk about all of the superficiality, but the connection we have through social media is amazing, particularly with people that aren't close to us. Well, thank you for that. Well, we know you just a little more than we did before. So let's dive into Astute Will. Now, basically, I approach these sort of chats really basically uh, <laughs> looking at it as if I'm going to do this for my business. So this is fantastic. You know, I get to be here, use the pod for my own research. So it's a little selfish, I'll admit, but um, we'll approach it that way. So help me get a sense of where the Astute Will sort of sits in the advice tech space. You know, sort of what category do you guys fit into? 
Yeah, so we're for financial planners and we're specifically to help financial planning practices deliver a better front end to their business. Okay. So what I mean by front end is all those interactions that you have just before a client meeting, during a client meeting, and then just after a client meeting. And our, our software is designed to uh, improve the efficiencies in that process, yep. improve the compliance because you're gathering it as, as you go, um, and also just to provide a really valuable um, experience for the client. So that's us in a Okay. And so then the sort of things I'm just picturing, um, and I hate I hate really pigeonholing, but just to sort of get everybody's heads in the right space, then it's probably things like online fact find, like any of those sort of interacting with the client elements, maybe risk profile questionnaire, that like that sort of stuff. So that's, I guess, quite simple. Um, then I did actually, when I did some digging notice you have gone into the whole goals end as well so drawing the goals out from clients um which is something that clearly is coming up a lot for people uh, or advisors in the last sort of few years um and even estate planning so there's it's it truly is the what the client might be asking about or need to interact on that you're sort of focusing on is that fair yeah, so you're right. Um, we we have a number of online uh, questionnaires because we believe getting information from the client before the meeting is is really important. Uh, okay. We don't see value in asking a client, you know, can you provide us with your middle daughter's, you know, date of birth or whatever. That's just mundane yeah. stuff. The client doesn't want to spend time in a meeting doing that, so they'll provide it. And and in the goal space, you know, a client needs to sit down with their partner and say, well, what are our goals? They, they need to do that at home, maybe over a bottle of wine, because my goal might be to go to Europe and have a, you know, backpacking holiday. My wife's goal might be to go to the US and have a five-star holiday. Yeah. So we don't want to have that discussion in the meeting with, uh, you know, a financial planner. Slash discussion about- slash argument, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we want to sort that out well and truly before we get to the meeting. Yeah, and our tools are very visual um, and, and interactive. And so we have, uh, you know, the, the financial planner has the ability to make it a much better experience. Um, and, you know, some of those uh, areas are the modelling calculators. It's, it's, it's much easier to, um, to model uh, using graphs what the effect of a, a, a strategy will be. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, And so if that's the sort of focus that makes a lot of sense, then it sounds to me then the, the, in terms of the people or the, or the software that you might get lined up against, you know, when if somebody's going out and doing their research, then it's not necessarily going to be those sort of core planning tools, is it? So it's not necessarily that because your focus is so much on that client interaction, then who else sort of do people line you up against, you know, when they're sort of, uh, doing the beauty parade and uh, yeah. trying to choose an option. Yeah. Well, it, it, we do sort of attract a lot of people that come from the X-Plan, the midwinter, the advisor logic, okay. because they are more focused on the back end, the SOA production, and the CRM. They do that really well. And, and from that core business, they've tried to push into the front end. And so, um, you know, advisors are, are kind of looking at that and saying, well, that's okay. But I hear that there's a much better solution for the front end, and that's that's who comes to us. Yeah, okay. And so I guess then, and we'll dive into that a bit later, but I'm guessing then sometimes you guys sit alongside some of those tools depending on, you know, even the dealer group somebody's with or, or what they want out of the tool. Then sometimes you're the front end, as you say, and then they might use something else as the back end. Is that quite yeah, common? Yeah, that's exactly right, yep. Yeah, okay. And so what actually triggered you to build the tool. What? What? Uh, what? I know. Imagine it may have involved some some wine at some point, and you were waxing lyrical with somebody, and went, "We can fix that problem." What? What caused that moment? It, it was actually a, a, a combination of things. So I came into the financial planning business uh, in my early thirties. Mm-hmm. I I uh, had a um, I did a marketing business marketing degree um, out of uni. I went to Price Waterhouse. I uh, 
I was a management consultant. I, I learned how to look at a business and say, well, where are the efficiencies? What do we need to do? And I was national marketing manager for Australian Associated Press when the internet first happened. Oof. And I had to try and, um, and market a new sort of um, breed of internet-based tools. And I came into the financial planning industry and, um, you know, I asked people, well, how do you explain financial planning to, to your clients? And there wasn't really an answer. And I asked, how do you, you know, explain these strategies and whatnot? There wasn't really an answer. So I kind of thought, wow, this is really weird. Um, you know, there's 20,000 financial planners back then <laughs> in Australia doing pretty much the same thing, 20,000 different ways. There's got to be a best way. And so... Uh, you know, I noticed that I might try and explain a strategy on the whiteboard first thing Monday and it'd be fantastic. And then I'd try and explain the same thing last thing on a Friday and, geez, it was just a, a dog's breakfast. And yeah. I thought, I've got to be able to do this the best way every time. And so I started to build PowerPoint presentations and uh, and Excel spreadsheets that just helped me explain things and then my colleagues said, hey, we want those things <laughs> to do the same with us. <laughs> so it became um, the online tools that we have, you know. Okay. Although we're about to launch the fourth generation of those, so they're a little bit different. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that has iterated significantly since oh, you yeah. first started. So when, when did you first sort of launch Astute Wheel? We built it in 2011, launched it in 2012. So it okay. turned 10 um, in April this year. Wow. Okay. So, I mean, four iterations in that, like, that's pretty good. That means you're sort of really continually looking at the tool and, and considering what's needed and upgrading it. So that's, you know, that's good news. I think one thing that, well, I know from myself and a lot of advisors is there's tools out there that feel like they never went past 1980, you know? <laughs> so it's, it's nice to hear that you're sort of revisiting those things constantly. And I guess adjusting to the possibilities out there or the way things can be represented. Is that is that sort of the approach? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, when we first launched, uh, I think a, a, a decent-sized TV screen probably cost you five grand. Now it's 500. So, yeah. you know, the, the, that's much better. The internet speed <laughs> in most meeting rooms was, uh, you know, an old tower that, uh, that nobody yeah. else wanted to use and now yep. it's NBN. Um, and the platform that you can build these softwares on, has improved incredibly. So the latest one that we've uh, embraced allows us to build things much more quickly and also, um, you know, much better because there's more flexibility around it. So we've embraced um, the, the that platform. Yeah, for okay. That. Fantastic. So it's clearly a tool that advisors would be then immersed in. So if they decided to go ahead, are you finding though that there's other members of the team that are then part of that? So are you finding there's admin team members that maybe use part of it or prep it or yeah, how are you finding in the out in the real world how advice teams are utilizing the tool? Yeah, so it, it is a bit of a team effort. Um, the the first part of the process, gathering information from the client, that's an admin task. It's just sending uh, a link to our client room or links that have the the questionnaires. There's templated emails that can be used or adjusted. So the, the advisor typically spends some time on the phone with a new prospect, then yeah. tells yeah. the admin team, sends them an email. Here's the person's name, email address, phone number. Um, the admin team then sends them to the appropriate client room um, and, uh, and follows it up to get the information back. Yeah, okay. Once that happens, the advisor gets the information, goes, wow, this is a, a whole lot of information about the guy or girl I'm seeing tomorrow or the couple. Uh, I can now prepare for the meeting so I understand exactly what they're looking for. Um, and then in the meeting, they may have uh, a junior advisor or a power planner that helps them run the tech, um, you know, because they, they're typically the experts at uh, modelling and, and all the rest of it. And the advisor can sit there and keep the momentum of the meeting going with the client rather than having pauses, you know, to, to enter information. And so the whole meeting can run very smoothly and much more efficiently uh, because you, you know where you're going, you know what you're going to talk about, and you don't miss anything. 
Yeah, okay, fantastic. And you're finding any of the practices, I mean, I'm just thinking throughout our client base, and we do have some older clients. To be fair, we have very groovy older clients, so they do happily try all sorts of things out with tech. But there will be some that even, you know, entering information into, say, a form or something like that is a challenge. Does anybody sort of use the tool, all right, you know, so a member of the team is going to give you a call. You can do this yourself, but they're happy to talk you through and just collect it over the phone. Or Like, are they using the tool anyway as that sort of funnel of the way to collect information, no matter whether it's the client or the team that collect it? Yeah, there's two aspects to that. Firstly, it's really easy to build a questionnaire. Mm. What's difficult is to make it intuitive and, you know, really easy to use. So we really have specialised in that aspect of things. Um, but you you may get um, an elderly person that just doesn't feel comfortable doing it. So uh, some of our advisors will have an admin person that says, okay, uh, we'll give you a call and I'll just ask you questions and uh, and I'll fill in the information as you go. And so you can do it that way. Perfect, perfect. And look, I think all tech's a bit like that, isn't it? I think we've got to, you know, fold it in and make the assumption that the majority will be happy with, whether it's the clients or even the team, and then just just make an adjustment for the exceptions. You know, I think there's never going to be something that everybody is completely happy with. You'll never find that, you know. So I think we've just sort of got to handle the exceptions as they come up um, rather than never using a tool. And the other thing that some people are hesitant about is the security. Um, so they want to know about that. And part of our process is they are able to, um, there's a pop-up that says, if you want to understand the security a bit more, just click on this um, this uh, hyperlink and that'll get you there. And because it's not using the, the email system, it's being pushed straight to the database, which is protected by a firewall, um, it's, it's much more secure. Yeah, fantastic. Anything that avoids email, right? It's uh, <laughs> it's all about, about uh, cybersecurity. So is there any, you guys will have onboarded a whole lot of, um, you know, different businesses and types of practices. Is there any particular ones where this works really well, where it just sort of flies, you know, as soon as they start using it, it really works well. And conversely, others where it's a bit of a struggle for them? Yeah. Um, it, it works really well for a holistic planner because- okay. The tools kind of guide you through a holistic process. And if you are sort of not a holistic planner, then you're going to be looking at it or the client's going to be looking at it and saying, well, why don't you offer advice in that area or that right. area? Um, but that's okay. You can you can decide I don't want to um, have advice in that area, but you need a, a you know, a, a referral partner. If Some you don't sort want of solution. To, then here's a mortgage broker. If you don't want to do estate planning, well, here's a, a solicitor. So you can certainly get around it that way. Yeah, okay. Um, and are there any um, in sort of insider tips for somebody that's sort of embarking on this with a stew wheel? You, once again, you'll have seen a few people go through the, the journey um, and it's always a process, any new piece of technology you fold into your practice. Um, then is there any, you know, yeah, insider tips you'd give them on how to make that smoother? You know, or even things that they might do before they fold it in that could just make that just much sweeter and sort of more streamlined for them as they as they fold it into the practice? Yeah. So the first thing is you, you really should put yourself in your client's shoes. And so send the link to yourself, fill in the questionnaire uh, or the questionnaires. There's, there's quite a few there. Um, and get a feeling for this is what the client is being asked to do and get comfortable that that's the case. Uh, and a good way to do it is to put, you know, if you're an advisor, put yourself through, put all your information in and then get that information back at the other end and go, okay, well, I've identified these areas and, uh, and, and then and then look at it as if, you know, you you are the client and you're the advisor as well and you're taking the client through the process. So that's the first thing I'd say. Um, the second thing is do the training. We have uh, a series of training videos, so you can always go and see those. We also provide training on a weekly basis that you can attend as many times as you like. Uh, on the client engagement tools, on the modelling calculators, on the insurance needs analysis and the estate planning. So uh, you can you can go to those every week, you know, for the first six months if you want. Uh, but also take it on as uh, through stages. You know, the questionnaires are really easy. The admin people can do that. 
understand the goals tool, understand the scoping tool, understand how to use the retirement calculator and then move on. So if you start using it, you know, if you try and take it all on, it's, it's, it's too much, but use the bits that are important to you, get comfortable with them and then move on to the next one. Yeah, great advice. And I like the idea too of um, we're really lucky in our practice. We've got quite a spread of demographic in the team. Uh, and uh, yeah, from black thumb techs through to full on tech geeks like me. And so, uh, so we'll often do the same thing where everybody just gives it a try. And I sort of say to them, would you try and break this, please? Like get a, you know, click a few times too many, just give it because the more, you know, what can happen before your clients do that, then A, you can give them a heads up, but B, I think also you can be more empathetic when you're talking to them. I think when we put in these efficiency tools, any type of tool really, um, any tool we can think, well, why, why can't they work that out? Isn't it obvious? It's like, well, no, <laughs> actually it's not, you know, it isn't necessarily. Um, and so what may be intuitive for me won't be for somebody else. So the more your team can have experienced that themselves, then they can say, oh, yep, that's what I did. Just go back one, one step, you'll be fine. You know, so I think that's really important for every member of the team and particularly as all of us look at those things differently. You know, and they'll probably have different um, machines they do. One will be on a Mac and one will be on a tablet and one will be on a, you know, Microsoft machine. So all of that is great to just see what it looks like and how it works for sure. So, look, I think um, I got a really good sense of then the value it can bring in terms of drawing the client closer and, and I guess almost closer a lot sooner, you know. So there's some insights you're going to have well before you're really talking into the complexities and emotional elements, which is fantastic because I think that helps you position how you might bring a topic up. That's always difficult in a conversation with a client where you've got to talk about some tough things to then you have some information already on hand is powerful. Um, so, you know, that's exciting. Then, you know, what I'm sort of wondering is how how you guys, if you do, integrate with other tools that advisors might be using. I mean, integration is something that sounds simple and never is. Um, but, but yeah, what do you guys integrate with and how do you find that works for practices? Yeah, so we made a decision uh, a number of years ago that we didn't want to be integration specialists. We yeah. wanted to focus on our core business. And so uh, we were approached by a group called, back then it was YTML, then mm -hmm. Raw, and now Dash. So your, your listeners have probably heard of those. Yeah. So they, they put together a, an integration hub where we integrate our client data with them yep. and then they integrate with Xplan, Fin365, Chartwest, Omnium and various other software providers. And so we, we've... We've made the decision they are the ones that can do that for us mm -hmm. for now. Eventually, yeah. we'll, we'll look at integrating uh, separately, but uh, but for now, it's with them. Well, and I'm, I'm guessing when somebody else is constantly working on that, you probably have more integrations a lot quicker than you would have if you were trying to do all that yourself. Yeah. So it's not such a bad strategy. Yeah, and, and the benefits for uh, an advisor is, okay, if you're using X-Plan as your back end, then you can integrate data backwards and forwards, so that's fine. Um, but if you just want to create your own tech stack, you can do that through Dash because you can create it with their integration partners rather than try and pull seven different um, softwares together that don't talk to each other. Yeah, okay. And so in terms of what that... Um that integration might, because there's clearly data integration and that's something we all focus on as well. I've entered it all in over here. Then how do we, how do we get it all to magically across there? So that's sort of an obvious one. Is there other levels of integration in terms of triggers or, you know, anything that can go from one to the other, or is it primarily data that's the focus? It's primarily data. Um, yep. Their SOAs can pull our, um, uh, our graphs and our, um, and some of the information from the modeling tools across um, so retirement and insurance are the ones that uh, that that can pull across. Yeah, yeah okay. Only into um, um, Dash though, it, you know, it doesn't pull across to X plane. Our modelling calculators are different to theirs, so it's yeah, not okay. going to populate their X tools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, and so. That's sort of, you know, me focusing like me of a, a new user or somebody who's looking at it new. You've got a whole lot of people currently using 
uh, astute will. Is there anything that you sort of feel like most people miss, like they're not using in the in the tool that they could be, that they've just sort of either forgotten in the training or sort of missed their initial focus that you feel is a bit underutilized but has real value? Yeah. It's, it's interesting. We, we survey our clients uh, every year and we ask them those questions. What are you using? What are you not using? What would you like to use? What do you like? What do you not like? And that feedback loop is really um, important to us because we're constantly trying to improve the software. The client engagement tools are pretty well used because they're so easy and they're so valuable. And, you know, people just go, well, that's a no-brainer. Let, let's use that. Um, the scoping tool is probably a little bit less used and it's just so powerful. It's, it's powerful on the compliance side because it guides you through gathering the, the deep um, and, and comprehensive information that ASIC is looking for. Mm -hmm. But it's also a great process to then uh, push back to the client and say, okay, we've agreed that these things are in scope. And by the way, here's all the things that we're doing in there. There's a lot, you know, we, we, we're we doing a lot for you. And the client goes, wow, that's amazing. I didn't think retirement had all that going on. And so they're much more likely to pay a commercial fee knowing that there's so much work going on. Yeah, okay. So, so that's on the client engagement tools. The, the modelling calculators are so powerful. And to use those in front of a client takes a bit of getting used to. You either have a power planner in there doing it for you or eventually the, the financial planner you know feels comfortable enough to do it um, but to show a client in the meeting the impact of a decision um, like a retiree wants to go on a holiday and buy a new car okay well let's plug those in it takes like five seconds what's the impact on your retirement uh, plan well it's it's too big an impact so maybe instead of a hundred thousand dollar bmw we'll go with a $50,000 Nissan. How's that look? Yep, that's much better. Instead of a five-star holiday to Europe costing 30 grand, let's go four-star and it costs 20 grand. Yep, that's much better. That's what we'll do. Okay. And so the when well, I love the just going to the scope one, that's um, bringing rigor to the sort of things that as advisors we go through in our heads anyway is fantastic. I think anything that can do that, that can just make sure you never miss anything. You know, it's a great way to sort of force you to go the bouncy ball stuff. You know, I love that stuff just because it just gives it that substance. And if that then demonstrates to the client that substance as well, you know, that's, that's fantastic. Um, so the modeling, um, Without having seen it, I'm I'm picturing you know lines and graphs and and uh, you know curves and money tapering off and is is that the sort of thing that it has? Yeah, and and you know one of the things when I was an advisor, and I think there's plenty of advisors out there like me. When you have to explain something to a client, you you tend not to try and do it in words. You go straight to the whiteboard and you start drawing things because. Most clients are visual, they get that. So you're, yeah. you're telling a story and you're, and you're putting visuals in place. The, the tools we created were to try and replicate that and, and make it the best visual every time. So, you know, some of the tools are designed to just be quick, easy tools to, to use in front of a client um, to maybe, you know, show the client if they've got a $500 a month to do something with, what are their options? They can put it against their mortgage, they can salary sacrifice to super, start a savings plan, a geared savings plan, an investment plan, or, or you know, borrow against their home and then fund that, uh, that debt um, in an investment. Yeah. How do you explain all that to a client quickly and easily? Well, you can't unless you've got a tool that just shows bar graphs that say, well, given your set of circumstances, your tax rate, et cetera, this is, these are your options. And the client looks at it and goes, wow, okay, there's four, five, six, seven options. I like that one. Salary sacrificing looks like it's the best return for the least amount of, you know, risk. So then you can go deeper into that with other tools to say, well, this is how it works and let's stress test it under various circumstances. And then you've got the cash flow calculator where you plug that in and you show that instead of running out of money at 75, you're now going to be okay to 85 because you've done that strategy. So you yeah. can show it on different levels. Yeah, okay. 
And so then sort of looking forward from that, um, I've always got, you know, in the back of my mind, we, we've all been to the fund manager, you know, when they have the big events and we'll go to a, like a hotel ballroom somewhere and we're all there and the very clever fund manager comes up and they're talking about the markets and maybe a, a um, an investment they've made and look at what it did and all that sort of thing. And they've got the graphs up there. And I had this moment of clarity because I had a friend with me that was up the back of the room who's not from our industry. She happened to be watching the same thing. And um, afterwards, she, she said, you know, whispering, did you understand any of that? I'm like, well, sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, they described the graph and they should, yeah, yes, but like, and she's from marketing. Uh, and she said, yeah, but, you know, it took them 15 minutes to describe the graph. I'm like, yeah. She's like, well, what's the point of the graph? <laughs> Like they could have just described it in words. And so I have to admit, it's sort of lodged in my brain a little. And so I'm wondering with tools, even like yours, you know, where you're looking into the future clearly, but, it, you know, more infographics almost or things that are visual representations, you know, the ball gets bigger or smaller or things that for clients who don't deal with X, Y, graphs and all the things we do that can help them, you know, latch onto these concepts as opposed to us then even having to describe what the graph is before they can get the messaging. Is that something that's on your radar? Yeah, you know, our, our entire focus um, has always been what's the client experience? How do we simplify and, and explain things visually and, and in an interactive way so that the client gets it? So if you compare our graphs to X-Plan's graphs, they're chalk and cheese. Uh, the X-Plan graphs, uh, you know, are, are back-end graphs that, you know, are more the compliance stuff. Ours are still very compliant, but they're easy to read. and you know, with the, the the visual on the screen, we've got a tab that gets rid of all the side information, makes the graph the whole screen. So you can say, right, let's now have a look. And you can unplug certain aspects of it so that you're just uh, looking at the bare basics and saying, well, let me explain this to you. You know, this is where you are. This is where you're going to retire. This is where you're going to run out of money. And then from that graph, you might have four different options where you can show the income side of it, the expenses side of it, the, you know, so you can really, um, you can really present it in a number of ways and the client can ask questions and, and it's, it's really easy for them to understand what's going on. Yeah, fantastic. And look, who's to say where this will go? I, I mean, I can I can see a, a future where, you know, people could have the, you know, virtual reality, reality goggles and instead of, you know, the graph, what they're seeing is the things they've put as their goals as imagery into sort of a path into the future. And when one scenario comes up, something starts graying out because it's like, well, nope, you're Harley, da you're Harley Davidson at age 45. It's not going to happen because of that decision you just made. So, so then it makes it really tangible, doesn't it? Because it's like, wow, that thing just disappeared because of something I was about to do, you know. So I, I, my deep hope is we can all get to that point um, mm -hmm. where it's so real and experiential. Um, but it helps if we're already now using what we can to really make it easy for somebody to decide themselves, you know, to really be informed um, and be able to make the right decisions. So, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but <laughs> our tools really go to – making the client's goals the very center of the advice that that's being provided so you know we take it seriously we we really want the clients to put together a list of goals we make it easy for them to do that and then our process allows you to track the goals it allows you to archive a goal so what's happened have you achieved the goal well that's captured have you decided that you're not going to do this goal for some reason maybe the Alaskan cruise in 2020, you had COVID and you couldn't do it. So that, uh, that's been uh, not achieved or, or just sidelined. Or was it in conflict? That BMW for $100,000 didn't really stack up against paying off the credit card and, and paying off the mortgage. So they're all captured. But the idea is the client gets given the list of goals before every review meeting and they're able to say, well, that cruise we're not going to do till 2024 now the bmw is now a nissan and we've got these three other goals and that's that becomes the center of the discussion um, each year or whenever you get to see your clients so that they understand it's all about them and achieving their goals yeah fantastic they're in the driver's seat which is just amazing you know that's where we need all of the all of our clients in um, right. so that they feel truly empowered so and anything on the amazing. development path or yeah. Or into that's the future. See, that's where they see the value as well. Yes. That's value to me because I'm achieving goals. 
Yeah, well, exactly. I, don't, I don't understand that two percent above, you know, the the index means anything to me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So into the future, yeah, what's coming? Yeah, up? There's quite a lot coming up. Um, as I said, we're about to um, s- start releasing um, version four of Astute Wheel, um, and there's there's quite a lot of improvements that we're uh, we're going to be releasing. So that starts in November. We're just doing the internal beta testing at the moment. Mm-hmm. That'll that'll then go to our group of about 12 um, users who will then start beta testing once it's gone through our system. Um, and then we're doing a, a series of user forums around Australia and most of the capital cities in mid-November where we'll be releasing the um, the new software. Okay. So the, the areas that we've really focused on is in the business systems. There's going to be a lot more flexibility around um, the, the the internal users, um, admin, power planners and financial planners, you'll be able to set a lot more assumptions uh, in the back end that will then okay. flow through. Um, you'll be able to set your own colour schemes. Uh, if you've got a logo that's red, you can set red as your, your colour scheme, yep. as whatever you like. There's also... Um, you know, you, you, you'll be able to set up your own risk profiles in the background and, and that'll all flow through to the, uh, the calculators. Um, there's also uh, the ability to interrogate a lot more of your information. So if you want to identify all my clients that have no estate planning or all my clients that have insurance or, you know, you can interrogate, you can identify opportunities where, you know, you might be able to send some emails out to clients saying, well, have you thought about your estate plan? Here's a process that uh, we offer and perhaps you should come in. We also have looked at some CRM capabilities. Um, so we're never going to be an X-Plan. Um, we, we don't want to be. Uh, what we've done is focused on and, and through our focus groups and our, our um, feedback, we've identified which of the CRM capabilities are most important for advisors. Um, so we, we're focusing on providing those. Um, and probably the biggest thing is a client portal. Mm. So we, uh, we were the first to introduce client rooms where the client went to a, a room that was specifically for them. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, uh, and I think we've been a little behind with client portals, but we wanted to see, you know, what everyone else was doing. And I think we've identified that a client portal really is much more than just where you share information. It's got to be that and more. It's got to be mm. interesting. It's got to be functional. Uh, it's, you know, secure. Our, our process is secure already. Uh, but we've really looked at what's out there and we want to be the best of breed in terms of uh, the kind of portal that the client likes to use and the advisor likes to use. So that's what's coming. Ooh, you're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have been busy for the last 12 months. So, yes, uh, yeah. taking advantage of all that time that we've all had, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, that's really exciting. Look, and you're, I completely agree. I think client portals are that sort of next gen, aren't they? That's the next thing that I think we're all going to be um, needing to be thinking about, thinking about what will add value to our clients and our businesses. So it's exciting that you're sort of folding that in um, and considering it. Uh, it is one of those things that when people first start talking about it, it's, oh, we can do all these things and then you work out that nine out of 10 of those nobody used and so it's <laughs> it's all down to actually what adds value um, and what will contribute, uh, which is is uh, really important. So I'm, I'm actually really impressed that you guys have sort of taken that time because I think that will make a big difference. Is there anything else I've missed or that we've not covered for people taking a look at Astute Wheel? Uh, I don't think so. I think, um, you know, the kind of people that, that come to us are really the – the advisor that's thinking, how am I going to do things better? How do I add value um, that my clients can look at me and understand I'm providing value to them? And uh, and that's where that's where we really sit. So the advisors that come to us um, are the, those kind of people. 
Perfect. Well, all right, Advice Explorers, if you'd like to find out more about Astute Will, then the website link will be in the episode show notes. And we've also added, added actually a link to Hans on LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. I'm sure he'd be happy to point you in the right direction if you have any particular questions. Thank you so much for joining us, Hans, and being sort of first off the cab off the rank for the Advice Tech podcast. Um, really appreciate your time and for giving us all of those insights and really getting our head around uh, what Astute Will can do. So thank you very much. You're very welcome, Peter. Thanks for inviting me. So interesting, right? Client-facing tool. So are you a current user of Astute Will, listener? Do you maybe agree or disagree with our discussion on the app? Uh, please share your insights on the XY community platform as I personally, and I'm sure other advisors and people in the industry would really love to hear your take. Uh, and please share any tips, you know, any further ninja tips for current users um, that you might give to other advisors on using Astute Wheel and how to really fold it into your practice. Now, as for my sort of thoughts on it, then you know, these client engagement and presentation tools that are really designed to be utilized at more than one point during the advice process, right? So through laid through before meetings, during and after, um, these then going to need to be intentionally folded into your processes in the business. Um, and so what I mean by that is, you know, if you're thinking about introducing a tool like Astute Will, then I'd get you to sort of get a big old white hood or something similar, map out your current advice process, you know, boxes and arrows style, and then add a new sort of role, like it's almost a new team member, but call it, you know, Astute Wheel. Treat astute these sort of tools, Astute Wheel tools, like they're a team member and insert it into the into your process so you can really see what role it's going to play. Have a think about um, where you're going to introduce it and how, what positioning you might need to do. Even think about scripts your team can use. Um, Look, scripts can feel a bit stilted initially, but they are a great place to start and they will mean your team are more likely to introduce these tools once you make make a decision to actually take them on. Really consider, you know, who's going to be generating the reports, who's going to be following up, all those sort of elements make this a full decision, not a, hmm, we'll just give it a whack and maybe use it for a couple of clients. Um, I'd give it a really good thought, think and fold it through all of those layers uh, of your process. Now, when it comes to integration, look, whoo, integration, you know, between advice systems is notoriously tricky and, you know, often fails, to be honest. And this is even when, you know, both sides of the equation are really doing their best to make that in integration work. It's just for nickety for all sorts of reasons. This doesn't mean, though, you, that you don't do it. Um, but what I would say is what we do is uh, in our business is for about the first six months or so, maybe not that long, but about six months or so, we actually factor in some manual transfer of data between, say, a current system and a system like Astute Wheel, or at least a checking of the integrated data that's transferred. We sort of put that as a conscious step in the process. Because um, what's important to remember is the manual transfer of data or even just checking what has come across doesn't need to happen or be done by the advisor. It can be done by any member of the team. A support role can take that. And it's just a way of getting some confidence in the transfer of data and then better understanding where it goes and what it does. So this sort of manual step, you know, rather than open API, which is a <laughs> Uh, language used to talk about that um, transfer of, of the ability to sort of talk between systems. You know, I sort of call this human API, right? So it's that manual data entry. But I think doing things the hard way first can really help you understand how to best then streamline. So that would be just a little tip that I'd give you. Um, the other thing I'd say is there's, you know, so many facets to a system like this. Um, and Hans actually mentioned that, you know, there's a whole lot of layers, you know, should you decide to go ahead with something like this, then really plan the take up or the rollout really carefully, 
don't implement it all at once, please. Um, I have made that mistake before. You know, it would be completely reasonable to take a full 12 months to roll out just a handful of those sort of questionnaires and data collection tools, right? Really get that happening, bed down that process, get it streamlined, get the email template set up, all those things really happening and then for the second 12 months, you know, work out how to take advantage of some of the other elements that are on offer. Um, so please just don't feel like you've got to dive all in straight away. In fact, that's the last thing that I'd suggest. Now, I often get asked what it takes to sort of become a bionic advisor or at least to sort of be as immersed in tech for advice as I am. Uh, and the good news is the answer is really simple. All it takes is curiosity, you know, so to get your curiosity muscles really working each week on the pod, I'm going to bring to your attention a little app, you know, I may have come across that sort of tweaked my interest and I believe is probably worth at least a looky-loo for you as well. So for this week's Curiosity Corner, I'd love you to check out an app called Glide. You can find it at glideapps.com. Now, this app actually sort of takes a spreadsheet, right, and Glide actually turns it into a real working app or website, right? So it just takes something that's in, you know, boxes and rows, columns and rows, and turns it into a dynamic, simple website. Now, when we shared this back in February in the XY community, one of the members within pretty short order actually created a a PDS link database with QR codes for each PDS. You could sort it by product provider, you know, admins could, admin teams could grab what they needed and you just had to keep the data updated. It was such a wonderful application of the concept um, and can be far easier for for your team to use um, than having a a clunky spreadsheet. So basically anything you would put in a spreadsheet could be created into your own sort of website or app. And this is all without coding. You don't need to work out how to code. So check it out, you know, just get a bit curious, have a think about how you might apply it, maybe share it in the community of of some ideas you've had. Because honestly, the sky's the limit here. Um, And, you know, as we all get smarter at the way we do things in the advice world, I just can't wait to see what creativity and innovation does to the what, you know, we provide as advisors and ultimately the breadth of who we can help. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on how they too can become bionic advisors, being the best of both human and technology, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious.